Hi, hello, namaste to all my listeners. I'm your host, Sartak Varshne, and I welcome you all to the Balls of Steel show, where you get an insight into the business mindset of the entrepreneurs. Dhandoni Soch. Our today's guest is Mr. Paras Garg. Hi, Paras. Hey, Sartak. How are you? So, Paras, I'm good, I'm good. How are you? Great, fantastic. that's that's nice to hear in early morning so uh, paris yeah. what is the business that you're running because of which we're going to say that you've got the balls of steel <laughs> sure so i run a company called zoconut right so zoconut okay. uh, is what we call a vertical b2b saas company which means that we mm-hmm. we uh, help dietitians nutritionists health coaches uh who either want to start their own uh, online business or who want to scale their existing online businesses digitally we we help them mm-hmm. from end to end right we give them we digitize them we give them all the right tools equipments uh by way of mobile application software uh everything to automate their own uh, you know uh what do you call it clerical repetitive tasks uh we make them more efficient and all that jazz So we have fantastic case studies. We've been doing this for last almost three years, and uh, we have uh, a very good clientele. Uh, we have excellent case studies where we have helped people, you know, more than four x their revenues in less than two years uh, of going digital. Wow! So that is what we do. Yeah. That's that's great. Help helping the dietitian sector with the B two B SaaS. That's that's really nice. Okay, so Pada, let's go deeper into this journey and uh, let's start like. let tell me now how did you start this journey and from the beginning to the point where you are right now tell us the complete journey sure so it was it was an interesting journey actually i mean we've been through uh, two pivots right so we we started the journey okay. in 2015 i have a fantastic mm-hmm. co-founder her name is manya uh, and we have been friends since day one of college right and it was it was very filmy we met on the very first day of college and uh, i got transferred from a different college where i initially joined and i saw a lot of entrepreneurial activities there so i always wanted to think like, even in even since childhood i i have always been an entrepreneur so when i joined a college i i always like the aim was not to get a placement but to start a business and decide what i wanted to do uh, so on day one of college i i met manya we started doing a lot of things uh, we started a college society and we you know started training us in some skills that we knew were going to help us uh, going forward when we start building our own business uh, mm-hmm. so initially the idea was uh, very different right so this is this is 2013 14 when we thought that what is the one thing that is not sold online right? and that one thing at that time was medicine right so we thought right. that let's let's build an e-commerce for medicine uh mm-hmm. and uh, that is what we wanted to do this was clear in 2013 mid or end actually so okay. we started learning android development we started a college society where we had at one point more than 200 students that we were teaching android to uh i started a yeah. business uh, leveraging my father's business he was he used to uh, uh he had a business of home and kitchen appliances uh, at the time so i i leveraged his business and i created seller accounts on uh, mm-hmm. on amazon flipkart and all these right and this is flipkart in 2013 so like not even the first big billion day had happened so right. the the idea was to to gain knowledge to learn how an e-commerce company operates front end back end everything that was the goal mm-hmm. so this is to say that this this like we we spent more than 2 years uh doing our own research training ourselves acquiring skills required to start a business but then in 2015 mm. when we actually started we started developing uh, the product the applications we we gathered a team uh, i think 6 months into development when mg netmates and all these companies were launched right so mm. originally what was an original idea that we wanted to do there were already there was already competition and not just that okay. I mean, these were all deep pocketed competitors who were offering 20 25% discounts and uh, right these like you would get your delivery in in 2 or 3 days right but mm-hmm. then thought that our usp is going to be where we we are going to be a hyper local network right so okay. we, we will deliver your medicine in less than 2 hours of order okay so we did a pilot we had like it was a very successful pilot but of course we were not making any money because we had to offer like 
we we had negotiated an x percent of discount from the vendors and we were offering the entire uh, discount to the to the buyers right so we were not making any money in this uh, mm. it it sort of went viral right so we started getting downloads left right and center and people would report place orders from all over delhi even in places where we were not servicing so okay even after a clear uh, you know description a notification and everything that we are not operational in this area at that time uh, like the app was not like it not have features where you know we'll automatically block someone from a separate pin code it was an open application mm. but we were just trying to tell people through notifications and and descriptions that we are not operational in these areas but we still get a lot of one star two star reviews because we were not delivering medicine and we get a lot mm. of uh, five star reviews from people who were delivering but long story short we did this for uh, for almost 18 20 months and then because we were not able to raise funds and we were not able to scale it and because we were not making any money uh gradually we started thinking that okay uh what do we do how do we make money so that we can keep funding uh this first startup it's called medicians by the way it was called medicians which is still the registered name of the company uh at okay. zoom so this is how we started then we saw we thought that let's let's do a uh, let's build a software right so we used to do a lot of meetings with the uh, pharmacy stores we used to tie up right. we used to go and meet a lot of pharmacy stores and we saw that okay what kind of software are they using to manage their inventory and how do they mm. report their sales there these there were like a couple of softwares bar easy sol and all these softwares which which looked which looked deadly to say the least right and, like those were borderline scary to look at right uh, because they are very difficult to use and uh, you know a vendor would have to uh, go through a separate course to learn how to use these softwares so we thought okay there there has okay. to be it's got to be a better way we can build a very very simple uh, software and uh, the reason was that manya's father uh, had a pharmacy background he is a distributor of medicines right so we had a lot, lot of knowledge in how the industry operates and i my family is from a medical background i have around more than 15 doctors in my family so so the wow. interest was common that we always wanted to do something in healthcare right so mm. then we thought that okay let's build a software then we did not pivot at the time medicines was still ongoing but we started building a software which we named farmbox right which then okay which then gradually became a pivot because we started selling a lot of that uh, software we sold it all over delhi to a lot of pharmacy stores uh because we were mm-hmm. selling it uh, cheaper we it had a you know it had all the necessary features none of that additional jazz to it but uh, it did the job right so we managed to close a lot of pharmacies selling that software and then we figured on advice of our uh, uh, you know value advisors who told us that just focus on something that is making you money right don't uh, don't burn yourself out trying to build a company that that you don't know how to scale how to win in that market because already there were a lot of backers and there were a lot of small players had also popped up since when mg and netmeds you know all the chain pharmacies right. started their own applications their own online ordering and all that so we decided that okay let's let's do a pivot we'll only focus on uh, farm books and by this time this was 2015 uh, sorry 2017 uh, december uh, no 2017 january i think mm mm-hmm. yeah so we started uh, we decided that we'll do a pivot uh then when we jumped into it full time and this was also the time when we were you know sort of graduating from college and uh, the pressure to make money got very real right that uh, okay we are out of college we have said no to the placement offers that we had uh what do we do now right so in that pressure to make money in that pressure to pay our team members well right right i did that uh, you know the like we'll have to do a lot of hustling we we'll have to do a lot of uh, ground work and sales if that does not happen the clock is ticking right there's only so much that we can do so mm-hmm. in that effort we started you know selling like very heavily at least we were trying so the challenges that we faced were very unique where uh, uh, we figured that our youngest competitor was actually 17 years old right not the age age of the company right so the software okay. that we were trying to replace were actually uh, more than 17 years old right so there were two kinds of clients in the industry who were either using a software or not using a software people who were using a software were already very happy uh, with the software that they were using 
and then people who were not using a software took a lot of convincing that this is why you should use a software which is what my company did right so we used to go have meetings with these pharmacy stores we would tell them that this is why uh, you know you should uh, uh, have a software then once they were convinced then they would ask the question that okay why should i buy yours why should i not right. just buy the software that my neighbor is using right so we lost mm. we, st- we used to lose more deals than we closed right we right. didn't we didn't know any better so we were trying to do our best uh, but that was apparently not enough not that we didn't like it's not that we burnt out but uh, we thought that uh, you know this is this is going to take a lot more time to scale and build than we think so we need to be creative mm. and then uh, in this process by the way we we lost a lot of team members right there there were uh, there were people who we were working with uh, since second year or third year of our college and those people had right. you know been with us for 2 3 years and then uh, of course they also had pressure from their families uh, make good money they had excellent offers uh, from very reputed companies uh. so like to no fault of their own i mean they of, of course they decided to quit right and and uh, there were only three people me manya and our third co-founder balkirat who were left right so okay there were a lot of ups and downs man i mean on the team front we so this was the pressure right so that how will we support our team members we were anyways not paying ourselves anything but we had to right. pay our team members so mm. in that effort now this is where the zokonut story starts right that we are trying okay. we are trying to figure out that okay how do we uh, solve the money problem uh in farm books how do we close more deals so at that time i was trying to find distributors i would i was reaching out to pharmacy distributors who can actually resell our software and this and that and in this period i get a call from one of my relatives who mm-hmm. who is a dietitian right she's my okay. sister in law and she has a chain okay. of clinics uh, and she's a dietitian so she called me up and she said that paras i i want to build a software and can you please help me and i told her that of course we i mean we are not a services company we don't do this i i mean she she called me because she thought that he's an engineer uh, he has done uh, he's he must be a developer and he can help me this and that so i told her that okay i i don't do this kind of thing i can uh, i can refer you to someone else so i mm. kind of pondered off to my juniors who were at the time building trying to build a services company right so i, okay. I introduced them and they started building what became the first version of zoconet right so uh, okay th- there were two uh, two of our juniors who were doing this they had a company called graphiesto at the time and okay they did a very shabby job you know did a very uh, informal kind of a deal with them no paperwork no mou nothing so mm-hmm. they started building it almost 8 months in i get another call from my sister in law saying that who the hell have you introduced me to <laughs> they are they are not able to finish the job right and she was like hey, it's been 8 months and i haven't got in the product yet and this and that so i had to intervene uh okay so i intervened in the product in the project i asked my brother and brother in law uh, sister in law to actually pay them off just complete their mm-hmm. payment and i said that i'll take over the project and i will get it finished from my team mm-hmm. that is when we actually seriously started looking at Uh, okay what were they building right what is the business like what is it that my sister in law is doing for which she requires a custom software right because being from a medical background and manya being from a pharmacy background we were never really right uh, like we had never really looked at the preventive healthcare space right we were always in the mainstream medical uh, healthcare space so this is how right. introduced to the idea of preventive healthcare and then in that process when we took a deeper harder look at what the industry looks like mm. we immediately understood that this is going to be a huge opportunity right that this is like we saw that if someone is calling you and asking you to build a software for them this means that there is no existing you know at least that they know of a solution that they can just buy and it will solve all their problems so there was right. no solution like that so we so i i hope i'm not giving you like too much detail right It's, no 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 this is good this is good this is lovely please go on yeah so we thought that okay learning from our past experiences where in the farm books journey the idea was that we'll go from bottom to top right where we'll close right. smaller pharmacy stores shop mom and pop shops and then eventually we'll go and close larger chains apollo pharmacy mm. gadget pharmacy and all that in right. we thought that okay this looks like a fantastic opportunity 
but of course uh, we are stretched to our limits we have got to make money if we don't make money we cannot do a second pivot uh, at this time right. we decided that this time if we have to do this we'll do it right we'll do a top mm. to bottom uh, approach where we'll reach out to some of the best names that we know in the industry we'll try our luck chances are very less but let's see if yeah. we manage to close a deal with one of these big names that we have in mind then we'll mm. get a product out of it otherwise we won't right then we'll keep hustling right. we'll do you know odd projects service and this and that just to make enough money to survive and uh, scale farm books slowly we were also trying to raise funds parallelly we also had okay. a couple, couple of offers uh, which we declined at the time so it's not that uh, like we were really struggling it's just that we were not making money the business was right. there but as founders we were not paying anything to ourselves so right yeah so we started doing this and then we reached out to 10 of the biggest names in the country uh we got reply from four of them and we managed right. to close one of them right wow. so this was a very competitive deal and it was a very big deal for us at that time we we made a very very healthy amount of money which at the time would have covered our company for a year right so okay. we we have we were shamelessly i mean we asked for a ridiculous amount of money right thinking that what is the worst that's going to happen but to our utter surprise it turns out that we were not asking enough right because it happens that oh, when okay. you are, yeah when, when you are building a company i mean when you when you have never seen more than you know a few thousand maybe a couple of lakhs of rupees you have never right. seen the amount more than that then hmm. even in your wildest imaginations what is the highest amount that you can quote because because you know that piche kuch nahi hai right we are we are just hmm. a you know <laughs> three or four people who have who got nothing to do but if we get a deal then the idea was that we will hire a couple of people right so right. we portrayed ourselves as a very big company and okay. uh, so the deliberate kind of a, this, this is a funny story right. we try right. to portray that you know we are a fantastic we are a 20 25 people company and we do this and that and we are, and the the pitch had at that time it became very clear because we have a fantastic uh, advisor mr ashish tulsian who runs a company mm-hmm. called possessed we we understood that verticality is what sells right whatever you try to do i mean if i know that you are a specialist in that sense then i'm going to trust you more than anyone else so right similarly i mean when you when you have you know a heart problem you do go to a cardiologist not to a general physician so hmm. similarly we our pitch was that of course you can go to companies xyz but they do many things my company we only do diet and nutrition and remember that this is happening when we have no business whatsoever right but this was a right. this was a first pitch where we said that this is a company we are called uh, medicians we leveraged the name because it, it it was a very generic name it didn't mean anything and it it kind of showed that we are a company that has got something to do with healthcare right, right. so we said that we only do diet and nutrition and we are a vertical company and you should give this project to us so right. it turned out that our quotation was actually only about 35% of what other six companies had quoted to that client right so okay. even if our quote would have been double the price we would have still uh, closed the deal we discovered this much later after almost 18 months of closing the deal when the when the client became kind of a friend he disclosed this right. to us right but but yeah so that was the learning experience but i look at it as a great uh, you know because that deal kind of shaped the entire journey uh, going forward where it became our license it became our uh, you know it became our what do you call it uh, we thought that we now we deserve to win right because we have one of the mm. biggest names in the country behind us and uh, mm. we actually did manage to close a lot more deals because of their name because everyone knew that right time. and when we right. said that we are the company supporting that supporting them then everyone had no trouble believing us or supporting us or you know giving us their business so we did this for almost uh, i'll say 2 years from 2017 uh, to 19 yeah we did this and then uh, this was for two years almost we were trying to build uh, we were doing these custom projects for these big names because you cannot build a standard product uh, immediately right. for these people right so we had to learn from them we had to uh, deep dive into the industry we had to learn a lot that this is how the dietitian operates we had to uh, you know get acquainted with every everything there was to learn about our clients 
that is again mm-hmm. something that you need to do if you want to build a successful business where you should know when your client wakes up sleeps what is their heart rhythm how do they th- think how do they communicate right you need to know every single detail about your client because if you if you're building a solution for them so we did right. that for almost 2 years uh, and we very we were very proud that you know in this time we had almost 4 or 5 out of 10 top clients in the country we were already working with them then we decided and wow. and we were an expense expensive solution by the way huh? at this point we like the minimum entry to to work with us would be like 5 6 lakh rupees uh, so from a software perspective uh for the mm-hmm. clients it was not a very small amount uh uh-huh. and uh, like we have after uh, after every single deal we had more things to show to the next client right, right? so right. they would know that we don't have to do anything from scratch so we would we would try to portray ourselves as a product company whereas we mm. knew that we did not have a back end we did not have a ready mm. product and every single project or every single deal that we close we'll have to do everything from scratch because we because the architecture of the product was not uh uh that was, yeah so it was not standardized at all right so that was the back right. end that we knew but the client's perception was that their investment is going to be very low so they looked at our right. pricing as very high but still because the value proposition was very strong and because apparently mm-hmm. there was no one else doing this or no one else that they could go to uh and a lot of these clients had already burned their hands lost like good amounts of money trusting a company who were not specialized who did not understand their struggles uh mm-hmm. they, they were already uh, you know from their experience so that helped us a lot then yeah right. it was all it was all uh, i would say downhill from there where we then extracted a smaller version of the product a cheaper product cheaper product so to say on a subscription model uh, we started selling mm-hmm. it to smaller dietitians in uh, i'd say in the last 10 11 months and mm-hmm. we have like more than more than 500 dietitians currently who are using our product every single day right and then this lockdown i mean we have uh, we have built a lot of very exciting features that we were that were in the pipeline for the last year we were not finding the mm-hmm. time to do that but uh, because of lockdown and work from home and heightened efficiency we were able to push all those updates much quicker than we were able to do that earlier so yeah so that's pretty much the journey to this point uh, we have fantastically we also joined uh, a community called upekha which is uh, kind of a b2b saas community of india where right many very noticeable uh, b2b companies including freshworks charge b and many many other like large companies are a part of this community and we get one on one mentoring networking and all of these things uh, from upekha <clears throat> so we also managed to raise a small round of funding uh, which was actually to scale the business globally uh right we've been doing this in india and we wanted to scale it uh expand our business to us europe australia uh southeast asia and all this but uh then because of lockdown i mean uh, we decided to focus only in india for the next year or so wow that's great so uh you got this funding in which year <clears throat> this was around 6 uh, months ago 6 months ago in 2019 yeah december or january of this year December and okay, okay, okay. That's that's an amazing and you know very great journey starting from the first day of the college to <laughs> this point. That is really really nice. Okay, so uh, there are a lot of things that I have and I would want to ask you from this journey itself before uh, we can ask some other questions. So, uh, Paras, you told us that. Uh, you have been on you have been an entrepreneur since childhood yeah so i believe that your entrepreneurial mindset is uh, coming since the childhood and you've been doing it plus uh, maybe something from the family background as well so why don't you enlighten us more on that and tell us what was what were the entrepreneurial things that you used to do in the childhood and how has those things shaped your mindset for the present scenario sure. how has this <laughs> thing been there right that is also actually quite uh interesting to look, to think about in retrospection the kind of right. things i used to do so yeah so my influence mm-hmm. uh, has been definitely my father right so in our family uh the configuration is that everyone from my generation i'm the mm-hmm. only entrepreneur i'm the only engineer in my family and everyone else is a doctor right so okay. 
and my father's generation everyone everyone is a business person right my tauji is my father on my mother's side like everyone in their generation none of them is a service person everyone has a business so in that way i I've, i've never thought about it like that but of course it subconsciously tells you right you whose lead or whose example are you going to follow so if right. for me as my father's son i always wanted to do something that my father was doing uh, right and then uh, my father actually used to include me a lot in in his businesses right so my father has also had like a number of businesses he has been doing some construction work then we also had a rolling mill uh, in jnk where you know this was a large uh, factory Uh, of sorts right so i've seen all those businesses in in action uh, when i was in mm. i think 9th or 10th standard i used to literally manage construction sites right where uh, laborers are working and i'm i'm actually managing the construction work and all the accounts and everything so so i've always been active okay. a part of all those things uh, because of my father but then on my own the first thing that i did uh, first meaningful thing that i did otherwise i mean there was a lot of uh small things in school where we used to trade cards and all that i mean that is quite cliche like a lot mm-hmm. of people used to do that but then mm-hmm. i think in uh, in 10th or 11th standard what i did was that i uh, uh i used to go to this uh, there's a place called tonk road on karol okay. in karol road in delhi right you would get mm-hmm. these uh, uh what do you call shirts uh these were all duplicate shirts of uh, brands right so they will they will put their values and blackberry burberry's logos on these shirts and these were all local shirts uh right not poor quality or anything but these were all like first copy what they used to call it and then okay. i i find found this out because uh close to my house there is a like a big market where i saw that these kind of shirts are being sold and okay. they would tell us that you can get this shirt for 300 350 rupees and the mrp on those shirts used to be like 3000 4000 5000 rupees and i was like mind fuck that what the fuck is happening how are, how are they getting right it? so my dad decided to buy 100 shirts uh, from one of those vendors uh, uh-huh. for the factory workers yeah, back in okay. the day my father he wanted to gift these shirts to some people to the laborers right. the workers of the factory he he bought those shirts from him for which he took me and my father to the place where he acquired those shirts from so right. once i saw that I independently after that deal was closed after a week or so I went back on my own to that market and I discovered that the shirt only cost about 125 130 rupees uh to buy and these people uh-huh. were selling it for 350 rupees so I started uh, gathering orders from from these street vendors and I uh, used to acquire shirts uh from Tom Road and I used to resell them to these sellers so I did not do retail even at that time I was still a B2B <laughs> kind of a person <laughs> where I where I bought shirts from one person and sold them to other in quantities not less than 50 so right i did that that was the first uh, meaningful entrepreneurial thing that i did i made a good amount of money in that then uh, in college days uh, also another motivation for me when i said that you know i i made seller accounts on flipkart amazon and all that there were actually two mm-hmm. reasons behind that one was okay. that of course i wanted to learn how the e-commerce industry operates which would have helped me in starting my own business gradually mm-hmm. but also because my parents 25th anniversary uh, was coming up right and i wanted mm-hmm. to i wanted to make money so that i can mm-hmm. on my own without involving anyone else uh, just the three of us are my sisters and me we could throw mm-hmm. a party or we could you know do a very good celebration uh, for my parents 25th celebration so we did right. that and i sold um, around 80 lakh rupees worth of product in a year right so that was wow. yeah so it was unexpected by the way and the credit goes to all the credit goes to flipkart by the way so they did their first big billion day uh uh-huh. when uh, when like i had been doing it for say around 4 months at the time when i used uh-huh. to get i used i started getting emails that big billion day is coming and i did not pay much attention to it i did not know what it meant i just uh-huh. had to i just had to accept the notification that yes i will participate in the sale okay so i used to get around 20 25 orders a day uh on the day of big billion day i got uh-huh. around 280 orders in the first first 90 minutes of the sale right so okay. so, so uh, our seller portals got blocked 
by flipkart because they said that they have reached their uh, logistical capacity and they cannot fulfill uh-huh. more than uh, more than 300 orders per vendor uh, which then right. they again opened at 5 pm in the evening saying that they have acquired more logistical capacity more trucks and what not then uh-huh. again went live for about 30 35 minutes and i again get another 150 orders in that period and close so in a day i got around 450 orders where i used to get only wow. 20 20 25 orders a day so the amount uh-huh. of 450 i had to hire three people overnight just to package those orders right and that is when my father really got involved right so where is my entire inventory going so before that right. he was not that much interested that what am i doing i am just you know packing 20 25 items from the warehouse uh, at a time so uh-huh. he knew that i was doing something but he never really asked me or he never really you know hisab nahi manga matlab kabhi ki kya ho raha hai kaise ho raha hai there was a very uh-huh. clean thing where i used to you know keep my margin i used to deposit money in his account with every order so there was a very clean system that i had myself developed but when okay you know, many many lakhs worth of product got shipped in one single day it became like it it was like diwali for him right that we i sold so much product in one single day so he he got uh, intrigued that what the hell is happening tell me about it so he got involved and then over a span of another 6 7 months in total i sold product worth 80 lakhs of which roughly i made like a 10 10 12% margin so i made around 8 9 lakhs uh on the total uh, sale which was my profit after paying off my father his profit share and this and that uh, this is the wow. money that i made so i spent a lot of this money on my parents wedding of anniversary so yeah so i was always uh-huh. i was kind of always creative trying to find out ways how to make money uh, and because uh-huh. I, my father involved me in, in a lot of his businesses and i had the you know Uh, this tells you that i was able to do this i was able to leverage my father's inventory because my father also gave me that much freedom right he never right. Uh, questioned me that much so yeah so his influence was a lot there uh, and these are the kind of things that i did then in the another thing that i was doing parallelly to this i was doing a lot of freelance projects so like i said mm-hmm. before that i was starting i like we started android community in the college and we were learning android development ourselves we did a lot of uh, freelance projects development projects at the time mm-hmm. we also developed an application for a for a company called Scientology if you heard of it so Scientology mm-hmm. is again a multinational a huge huge uh, corporation we made an application for their india office uh, which is a okay project. yeah so i did right. that in, in i think in first year of my college itself yeah so that's, these are the things that i did I mean, you've been a real entrepreneur since the early ages. <laughs> yeah, that's that's huge. Yeah, that's really great. Okay, so uh, I still have more questions from the first part. So, uh, Paras, you told us that when you started with the meditations, right, and uh, in 2015. So, uh, so they were normal. We started earlier, but in 2015, there were competitors that were there, right? Netmed, the uh, one MJ, and all those people they they got in there during that six month period, right? Yeah. So, seeing the competition, definitely, you know, a lot happens in the top floor of our systems. So, what was the mindset that exactly happened during that time? Okay, okay, we have been trying to work our asses off during all this period, and then suddenly, when we are almost on the verge to, you know, kick this off. there are these competitors and the, so what was the mindset and what did that teach you at that point of time yeah so i mean we were not disappointed or shocked like, i mean maybe shocked but not disappointed or disheartened at all right so mm-hmm. uh, we knew better than that so whenever you see competition that's actually right. a validation of the industry validation of the market that yes an opportunity does exist Right. and hmm. if if anything i mean our belief our resolution became stronger because we started thinking that uh we now have a stronger usp where if everyone else is delivering medicines in in 3 days 2 days time we are delivering medicine within 2 hours of order right so that will become a stronger hmm. usp for us to sell and then uh, of course uh, the thought of uh, you know enjoying on someone else's marketing budget because If Vadim Ji and Netmates are spending are spending so much money, people are mm-hmm. getting awareness. People are learning that you can buy medicines online, right? Without that, the burden or the you know the task of educating the consumers 
would have been on our shoulder but because these right. companies were already there and they were spending like money left right and center tv ads and what not uh, auto rickshaw ads everyone knew that now mm-hmm. they can order medicine online and when they'll do their research because they were like four or five players at the time out of which we were one of those uh, players uh, yeah right. i mean they, they figured that i am getting my medicine in 2 hours if i buy from medicines and i pay like 5% extra because our discount was 15% and then when mm-hmm. it we were offering 25% so okay. if someone if someone would pay you know 10% extra maybe accept a discount of only 15% they will get their medicines within within 2 hours or if right. uh, if they value that 10% additional discount more they can wait for 2 days 3 days and they'll get their medicines delivered we only discovered that people were okay to wait for 3 days to get the additional discount because most of the online consumers people who would order medicine online uh mm-hmm. were people who were regular consumers so if if i if i if i'm on say hypertension uh, medication for the last many years if i'm a diabetic then i know that this is the medication that is going to go on for life right so people will actually order like 2 3 months worth of medicine at once and wait for 3 days uh, and just get right it. so yeah so there was a lot of learning there but uh, to answer your question i mean we were not disheartened surprised or uh, you know sad or anything uh, we figured that now like it should ideally become easier for us to raise funds easier for us to make sales and like i said initially you know we started getting a lot of orders we started getting a lot of downloads uh, and mm-hmm. people from all over the all of the state were actually ordering medicine even outside delhi we started getting downloads and people were ordering uh, and mm. because we were unable to scale our operations we were unable to spend money to expand our operations outside uh, you know few bit ports of delhi that is why we had to do it okay okay that's nice that's nice okay so uh, there is another thing that you uh, told us that you know manya's father had a pharma- pharmaceutical background and uh, you had a, your family has a medical background and that to you are from the from from your from father's and mother's generation most of the people are into the business background uh, apart from your generation where the people are in the, as uh, working as a doctor yeah. so if i look uh, at it from the bigger picture it's like you know there are a lot of derivations for you and manya that are coming from the family background right in terms of business sure. in terms of the industry that you're working at okay so if i may ask that how what do you think how does the family family background play a role in developing this business mindset in which your generation or maybe our generation starts doing a business sure so i mean i think that uh, every individual is a product of their uh, experiences of bringing um, and everyone mm-hmm. that they have witnessed in their lives right so fortunately for us uh, you know i met someone in college who had you know who was from a tangentially similar background uh, mm-hmm. exactly same but but yeah i mean when you start a business you try to count your chickens you know you you, you try to take stock of uh, what are your advantages disadvantages what is it right. that you do best uh, mm-hmm. where can i get uh, good opportunities networks what can i leverage most and this and that right so so we did uh, we did just that and we mm. uh, yeah so family backgrounds were definitely because we understood the industry better we understood the medical uh, you know the industry in general better we had more connections in that we decided to start there so yeah that was i mean for anyone i would say that family support family background their experiences matter a lot Uh, especially if someone is a first time entrepreneur you'll you'll see that you know whoever uh, starts early in their age someone who mm-hmm. has not done uh, any jobs or you know who has not worked at some other company then the right. place for them to get their experience and leverage their experiences from the family and friends or the educational institution which where they at right mm-hmm. for us, this was our first job we have never worked at a company right we started this right. company we were in third year of our college so uh to the point when we started we were only only and only coming from our family uh experiences our our uh, family backgrounds and and all that so yeah that that plays a very important role okay okay that's that's nice so um let's when we, when i come down in this journey of zoconart right when 
when you had to start zokonat so you did you did tell us that you know how this thing started but then starting of zokonat is somewhat about your second pivot right yeah and uh, so the meditations ha- happened and the farm book happened and then zokonat so this was your second pivot and you saw the opportunity from your uh, sister in law's idea when you dived deep into that idea so yeah what i want to ask here is that this was the second pivot and uh, weren't you scared what was your exact mindset at that point of time ki yaar okay hum log phir se pura ka pura model change karne wale hain should we do it should we not because pehle meditations kiya okay but farm books was better but farm books mein possibilities exist kar rahi hain but still we want to do it so what was the mindset at that point of time opportunity dikh rahi hai woh baat samajh aati hai but then wo is this switch worth it because as far as i have read and uh, i have known it's like a lot of research needs to be done and you know when you're doing a pivot it needs to be very very strong hold yahan ki theek hai this is the only thing or this is the thing that needs to be done so what was your mindset and manas mindset when you decided ki okay we are going to make this pivot so there are there are different kinds of uh, pivots sarthak so if hmm. let's say if i'm in uh, i'm in the preventive healthcare diet and nutrition industry if i want right. to let's say and hypothetical right it's never going to happen mm-hmm. all the listeners but let's say if we decide to pivot from b2b to b2c right mm-hmm. then that is a pivot where like it's a very very critical pivot business wise where i'm still in the same business whereas right. um, in our previous two pivots where we have entirely changed the businesses we have entirely changed the industries right right then those pivots are very different as compared to what i'm uh when i'm pivoting within the same business where i'm pivoting my target audience or i'm pivoting my model but i'm in the same industry so at that point mm-hmm. the struggle or the mindset was just to make money right because like i said the survival uh, was in survival. question our our ability to continue on the entrepreneurial path was was on the line and uh, even though both of our parents were very very supporting uh mm-hmm. we continued even after graduation of our college we continued on our entrepreneurial journeys for almost a year without making any money we only started making money from 2017 end right so for mm. the like i'll say for the first 3 years overall of our entrepreneurial journey we managed to do a lot of networking meet a lot of people make some name for ourselves uh, but uh, we were not actually making any money at that time right so the mindset was only to do something which will make us money and something that we can continue to do for a long time so the mindset that was clear since day one mm-hmm. was what mm-hmm. two things one was that we do not want to go and do a job right mm-hmm. because we can do that at any time we did not want to quit uh, on our entrepreneurial dreams and second was that we don't want to be a services company we want to build a product that was also mm-hmm. clear since day one that uh, you know anyone can open an it company today get a bunch of clients or a couple of clients sign one client in the us who's paying you in dollars and they'll start mm-hmm. calling themselves a services company we did not want right. to right we were all from uh, very uh, you know very dedicated technical backgrounds uh, all mm-hmm. of us in our team at that point had very very good offers from very good companies uh, right so we we always had this mindset that whatever we do we'll go deep into it we won't do like we won't do anything horizontal we won't con- keep on doing one thing over and over again right we'll we'll select our niche we'll select our industry we'll select our product and then we'll do a deep dive into it and become the best in that segment so this thought was very very crystal clear in even in the first uh, business that we did so these were the two things that helped us made our make our pivots and another thing that i would like to say is that in our case at least the none of the pivots mm. were uh, you know abrupt all the pivots okay. were very really gradual so the first okay. pivot was you know farm books came into existence as an idea to support meditations which was our first business but then right. at some point in the future it became clear to us that we were getting more excited we were getting more money for doing farm books as compared to meditations so we made it like we decided to drop uh, meditations altogether at like mm-hmm. much later right so it wasn't a very abrupt uh, decided pivot it became a pivot now in retrospection but for us it was never a pivot so to say right we didn't know the word pivot we did not even know okay. that okay right, right. So in the second time of course at that time we knew a lot of things we knew that we are making a pivot uh and yeah that was uh, i'll say a relatively more abrupt 
pivot but uh, we had to make the decision because those were so contrasting uh, in nature and uh, mm-hmm. both were very very elaborate products right and there, there was a rabbit hole problem of course because wherever you decide to go deep uh, you will have to uh, uh, you know you'll get 100 more feature requests developers and this and that so you have to manage a lot of things um mm. the difference i would say between farmbooks and zoponet for us which which clicked very hard was that farmbooks like we were selling it for at a ticket size of 12 to 15000 rupees per annum right? right but for zoponet i mean we were selling it for 10 to 15000 rupees a month right so wow. zoponet and the diet and nutrition industry very clearly was a heavily underserved industry and it became crystal right. clear to us that this is a much bigger opportunity for us and uh, india is not even the biggest market for the product that we are building and uh, mm-hmm. we were always be curious about building a global product that was another motivation uh, that was there since day one of our college that we wanted to do something on a global scale and we saw that opportunity in diet and nutrition and not in the pharmacy space right so all these matter like all these uh, Uh, what do you call it all these factors helped uh, while making the pivot and like i said uh, we were questioning ourselves right we were trying to be very intelligent very calculated in taking risks when we said that we'll do a top to bottom approach only if we close one of the bigger like big one of the biggest clients in the country if we close them then only we'll decide to build a full fledged company out of it which fortunately for us did happen right so that is how right. the, that is how the pivot happened right in that respect it was never like very very abrupt that you know one day you wake up and you say that okay i'm going to shut this business down and i'm going to start this business farm books got mm. completely shut down even like i'll say around 6 to 8 months after we had started zoponet right so aisa bhi nahi hai ki all the clients who were using farm books there are still a lot of clients uh-huh. who are using who are using our farm books mm. uh, software today right it's just that mm. we have suspended all support uh, to them but yeah so you cannot you can never escape uh, what you started doing earlier that that's, that's absolutely right and that's nice to say okay so uh, paris like uh, now i want to bring up something uh, in which you know what we have heard and seen and uh, we normally see around like uh, aap kya to chalo we can say that you know you had a family business background and you have seen your father uh, probably something same with man with manya as well but yeah. we know that you know there are lots of lots of entrepreneurs out there who start later there in life some some people start in their 20 some start in their 30s after their jobs and uh, when they make a decision okay no uh, this is not working out for me and then they'll then yeah. they start stepping into this journey right so right. at that point they have a complete different mindset no doubt they are grown up matures and sab kuch hota but this is a completely different mindset and doing a business is totally different as what you do at a job right yeah. and every step you learning so you started it very early and you started at the age of 9 and 10 when you were managing your uh, managing managing the workers at the construction site so i would say that that is also a learning where you're learning how the hr part somehow, somehow right so what i want to ask here is you started at 9th uh, at the age of 9 10 uske baad aapne wo merchandise wala chhota sa business kiya tha so what did you learn from that like what was the specific specific part of the business you learned from there was it daringness was it uh, the hr was it uh, making money whatever it was like give me some insight on that part i'm i'm literally sure. pushing you to go back in time and think but yeah i want to know what learned that point of time Sure. So, uh, starts that I mean again, uh, this is the first time I'm actually diving so like diving so deep. Uh, uh, so I'm actually thinking out loud, right? So, uh, when I think about what I learned when I was doing, you know, when with my father at a very young age, when I was getting exposed to all these business opportunities and I was managing uh, people at a young age, for me, mm-hmm. I never, uh, you know, at the time I did not know. what was happening at the time i did not know that what i'm getting to experience is privilege right right for me it was it was like normal my father one day said that okay let's go there my father actually initially we used like he used to ask me to sit on the computer and make some uh, invoices and this and that so my father mm-hmm. used to help me like uh, see me as a technical help right but then mm. 
one day in my summer vacations he took me on site and he figured that okay paras can do this uh, let me mm-hmm. let me leave it to him right so it was very gradual if i if i try to think about what i learned from them i'll uh, learn from there uh, i would say that it it changed my mindset in a way where uh, my threshold to look at problems and mm-hmm. not get uh, and not get rattled by them right that was the that that is what i will say is the only or maybe the biggest thing that i learned from there uh, other things mm-hmm. that you know hr and managing people and all that uh it's it's never the same right so you cannot say that because i because at that time i was i was managing blue collar workers right and right. their their mindset and like they are very different people than uh, than who we work with today then the only thing that i would say that a meaningful contribution at that time was that i get i got exposure in a very young age which which uh, which helped me experience things that most people do not experience in their entire lives it is someone right. has never done business right so they like what i got to experience at 17 like 15 16 years of age most people do mm-hmm. not experience that even in even when they become a senior citizen right so so that was right. the thing that i think uh, have, uh, helped me shape my uh, entrepreneurial journey better uh, yeah i mean from from that other thing that you uh, probably mentioned was uh, uh, you said something about uh, uh, you know influence of our families uh again so mm-hmm. yeah i mean it's all the same thing i mean i i think i'll just be repeating myself what i said uh, earlier also but keep right. yeah, that's about it okay so uh that's that's really great so uh paris like uh, is aap aapne bataya you know that uh, you uh, decide you were on a very clear decisions like that you didn't want to do job that you had to uh, you wanted to make money out of something doing entrepreneur only and so you, there were some aspects you were very very clear on so mujhe yahan aapse ye baat puchni hai that when you were so much clear on this and that to your team members were uh, who were, whom you were losing right at one point of time so yeah. they were getting job offers and so what was how did you try and convince them and what was that going through your mind ki nahi yaar mujhe pata hai because at every point you know as a being an entrepreneur myself i know ki yaar we are trying to show them ki yaar this is the vision and if not today some day this will work sure just hold on tight right so aapke paas ek vision hai but you're trying to convey it but then you're still losing it so what was happening at that point of time and up, how did you manage it what did you learn from that sure so as an entrepreneur sarthak i mean you have to be very good at storytelling right you right. need to be you need to be very good at uh, keeping your teammates motivated and i and i'm i'm actually smiling and laughing at this point because i very vividly remember the things that i used to do to to mm-hmm. convince my team that we you know we are we are going to make money very soon so right. there's the book uh, uh, rich dad poor dad and cash flow quadrants by robert kiyosaki right 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 i, I know to, i used to read those books uh, again when i was in school i think 9 10th or maybe 11 12th i read those books and i oh also God. saw a video and i don't even remember what video it was and who the guy was uh, who was who was speaking but but uh, i used to you know i remembered that script uh, by heart and it was in my mind i remembered that script and i knew that i have to uh, and i use that a lot right on my team members and the right. power of uh, i the power of compounding of course so like i said i uh, always had to be a product person and i used to uh, show my, i used to stand in front of a, a whiteboard and i used to show them that this is the calculation you know if we sell hmm. if we sell these many to these many vendors if we make x number of sales this is the amount of money that we are going to earn and we are only you know eight people uh, in the company so everyone is going to make a lot of money definitely much more money than we are going to get in jobs so yeah so i mean there was <laughs> there was so by the way like at that time i, I genuinely believed in what i was saying right it's never that i was uh, making stuff up or i was uh, you know duping anyone of anything but uh, uh-huh. we, we had a very very healthy so okay so with all of our team members even today like all the people who who actually left the company and joined somewhere else they are all very good friend till now right and because our relationship with all of our team members initially were of uh, was of mentor and mentee right because we built mm-hmm. society and they joined the society and when we used to teach them uh, android development and other forms of development so so most of our team members actually learned what they know 
from the experience that they got with us be it in the be it in the society or be it in the company all of us learned along the way we did not ever hire someone you know with 2 years 3 years of experience or anything like that right mm-hmm. so we hired people who were like absolute freshers uh, still in college first year second year of their colleges and uh, all of us all of us learned together including us so there was a very healthy relationship where all of us gave credit to each other for learning and if they are working at a very good company at a very good you know pay scale today they openly give credit to us so okay. that is how that is how it all happened and i think uh, to keep them motivated is is again something that was in the moment there was always a vision which is why we were even building the company right so that vision right. you need to be very vocal about what you are building you need to be very uh, you know very open about the vision you you need your team members to 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 view the same thing that you are viewing right if you are right. a founder if you are building a company there's definitely a dream there's definitely a vision or there's definitely an imagination of what your future is going to look like then you mm. need to be creative and you need to be very convincing when you are sharing that dream with someone else if they don't if they don't agree with you or if they don't see the same thing that you are seeing then definitely you are going to lose your uh, team members so what i mean is that whenever we lost a team member it was not mm-hmm. really a loss right because it's not that uh, like they, these were never uh, unpleasant departures or someone saying that okay i'm out right it was never like that mane and right. i we uh, fortunately had a very good network uh, in the ecosystem at the time and we in fact helped a lot of our team members get placed in other companies uh, we even helped one of our team members who was our cmo at the time start his own company uh, which today okay. by the way is doing very great right so yeah so i mean we have been those kind of people even today i mean even in the company at zoconet when we have 16 employees who are all right. uh, you know we are all like we are paying them at like more than industry standard and even okay. if someone comes up to us and tells us that you know they are not enjoying their work or they want to make a change then mm-hmm. we value their contribution because we value them as a person we try to keep them within the community so we are more than happy to write recommendation emails to a bunch of our friends who have other companies who can pay them more than us and we get them placed somewhere else right so till date we are trying to maintain that culture of openness anyone and everyone who needs career advice or you know whatever anyone is feeling they are very comfortable to come forward and share with us that is one of our big achievements and i'll say uh, something that a lot of uh, big companies don't have uh, mm-hmm. that is something that we are trying to maintain because as you grow of course your challenges become different and we are right. also sure whether or not we'll be able to maintain this but uh, at least at this point uh since day one of our entrepreneurial journeys we have one thing that we have uh, you know always managed is to give our team members enough exposure enough learning uh enough uh, you know uh enough uh, view into the future so that they will always stay uh, on top of their game always stay motivated that's nice that's nice that's nice okay so uh paras tell me now like uh what 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 is the biggest failure that you have faced in your journey of like entrepreneurial journey of setting up zoko net till now or any so, biggest failure and what did it teach you okay the biggest failure interesting right so there are so many <laughs> i mean <laughs> winning and failure are actually you know that's that's an everyday thing we always mm-hmm. win at small things every day we always fail at small things every day uh it's okay so my biggest failure i'll actually i'll have to think hmm okay i'll say uh, my biggest failure till date uh mm-hmm. there is one instance which i i'm never uh, i've not been able to forget right and i think that uh, i've i've tried to make up for it uh, till date and i hope i have is that right uh i lost a team member this is one uh-huh. one team member and one experience and this was an exception where i lost that team member because of uh, uh because of my mistake right i i i actually pulled the guy too thin right he was already you know doing his best 
right. he was doing everything he could but uh, apparently it wasn't uh, in my in my head for whatever reason it wasn't enough right and i okay. something needed to be done and it was urgent and you know there was a lot of things at line uh, so and he was the only guy who could do it so i actually stayed up all night with him on calls mm. uh in a, in my head i was actually supporting him right in my head i was i was like even though i did not have to do anything it was all him mm-hmm. but i would still stay with him on calls i will also wake up all night and i will try to you know complete uh what needed to be done but that actually you know created many fractures in the uh in the relationship and his experience at a company and uh, okay. that guy decided to leave us i think within within 2 weeks after that right and that uh, okay that great guy right? he was he was fantastic at his job he was super duper motivated that is why you know in my head i thought that he can do it and he'll be happy to do it and he's you know he's phenomenal and we'll do it together and he's invested but i somewhere failed to to understand and to uh, you know pick up the signals that i was getting initially that he's not comfortable and i should not push him to do things uh, that much in my head even though we were paying him you know extra and even though i was there to support him and we made it not about money we were trying to just achieve something which i thought that he could but uh, mm. yeah that was one of the things one of the first things maybe not this maybe that, that's not the biggest failure but that is one of the first thing that comes to mind uh, that that happened but after that i mean we decided uh, and we made a lot of changes in the baby in the processes and and the baby work at a company that no one else will feel uh the same way ever again yeah right right that's 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 insightful okay otherwise so, uh, i mean i mean you 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 win and lose deals every day right so yeah i i try not to measure failure and success in terms of money in terms of uh, deals or in terms of closures or you know business growth and this and that uh right i don't think we are you know that big even today to measure success or failure in that sense uh uh-huh. we are all learning we are all growing so i think one of the one of the only things that will make any company or in fact my company successful is going to be the people who are working uh with us right so it's very important or it becomes priority number 1 to have a very happy very healthy working environment so that is the reason i mentioned uh, that this is what i feel is the biggest failure and it has been uh-huh. the biggest learning opportunity as well i get it i get it so uh parents if i say like looking at from your entrepreneurial mindset uh, everything yeah. if i ask you like are you a are you a money minded person oh of course yeah yeah 100% so, so and... you, have, you have to be see i mean okay so it's not about okay so let me break it down for you right sure. so money oh, i mean if i ask you to elaborate what is money minded right mm. money is for us a tool a resource which helps us grow right uh money minded hona is a necessity and that is why you have uh, co-founders in your team i have right. two fantastic co-founders manya is my you know manya and i like we built the company together and we added uh, another co-founder his name is balkirat so all of okay. us know what our job is in the company right right manya and balkirat if you ask them are they money minded they are not right because we have deliberately uh, divided roles in the company and my role is to be money minded why because money okay. money is a derivation of value right so what we think, okay so do we use the term money in the company a lot no mm-hmm. right we don't think in terms of money but mm. the essence of your question is uh, is what i'm actually building on right so what you mean by money minded is actually uh, is is indication of uh, how much growth capital how much capital or how much you know are we mm. why do, do i care about that do i value that then the answer is yes mm. right but the right. lingo or the or the term or the or you know the values that we use every day or we think about is actually value right that how much value are you creating for the other person uh, how much value do your clients get out of your product and then the outcome of that or the by product of that is money right and money is something that is of value to everyone in the world and our team members mm-hmm. use that money like someone very intelligent i don't remember the name said that it's not money that you want you want the things 
that you buy with money right right so right. money is not more than a resource and i think this is where a lot of people go wrong right they they decide to do anything for money i can make much more money today by saying yes to a lot of project requests that come our way mm-hmm. uh, i have to think about today or a very short term goal i can actually say yes to a lot of things that get offered to us and i we, we will be able to make money but we say no to them because the larger or the longer vision is something else right so in that sense uh, like we are not money minded at all we don't say yes to anything that gives us money there is of course mm. a plan there is all of course a vision right you have to look at a lot of things they should all align very well together and uh, right. we have trained ourselves to to think not in terms of money but think in terms of value if i am able to save like if i am able to create a lot of value for my client where now they don't have to pay like seven eight different vendors if i give them you know a single interface where they are, they'll be able to manage their entire business if i am able to uh, you know show that your business can grow 4x 5x in in two years online right mm-hmm. how, how do you measure like money is just a by product of that if i tell them that uh, you know you tell me that this is what the company has done this is the opportunity cost this is the uh, you know how much your business has grown since you started working with us that is the communication that you want to have with your clients they'll happily pay whatever amount or whatever value you have set as the pricing of your product uh, but yeah i i hope i answered your question yeah yeah yes yes it did Yes, it is. Okay, so Paras, like, uh, are there any tips and uh, mantras that you would like to give to the listeners out there from your on- journey? Sure. Uh, I mean, I I'm not sure who's listening right now. I mean, if if uh, someone wants to start their business, uh, for them, I'll say just do it. Right? Don't don't wait for the right time. And again, I remember Sardar, you asked me. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, you said something about starting early right and a lot of people start right. later in their journeys right so that i mean there is one thing that i always try and mention whenever i get an opportunity like this right that the sooner the sooner you start uh better it is right because there is a concept known as opportunity cost you said that i was able to start and i was able to do it when i was in college and mm. what was the mindset behind it what was the rush or why did i say that i never wanted to do a job right what was the mm-hmm. what was the reason behind that so right. the reason was that i understood at an early age that there is something known as opportunity cost which is which is very low when you are a student right right or or it is still lower when you are young right as you grow right. old, as you start doing things in your life as you uh, you know incur expenses when you you have to incur responsibility then you have to handle a lot of stuff then your opportunity cost keeps on getting higher so what do i mean by that so when i was in college mm-hmm. no one no one anyways expected me to earn money right when you are right. a student you are not expected to make money if you do that's mm-hmm. great but of course you have to you know complete your graduation maybe go for even a post graduation and then get a job uh and then in your job you actually start making money so let's say if i started when i was in college and i failed right i shut mm-hmm. down my company when i was in final year of my college and i started doing a job what did i lose right, right? i did not lose anything my opportunity mm-hmm. cost was zero if anything that experience would have helped me get a better job right so right when you pass out from your college let's say uh, i was getting an offer let's assume say 1000 rupees a year let's say right right so right. if I, if i decided to not take up that job and start a business instead and that business i earned let's say only 500 rupees right, right. then my opportunity cost was 500 rupees because if i was not doing this business and i went for a job i would have made twice that much right, right. so so the advice or the mantra or like not exactly a mantra but an advice to everyone who's listening is that today is the day when you have when your opportunity cost is least right you'll every with every passing day if you're a student uh soon you'll start incurring opportunity cost and it is going to become harder for you to start if you're already doing a job it's harder for you to you know let go of the salary and take the risks uh to build a company another thing is that don't uh, don't glamorize uh investments right don't think about raising funds because i was a victim of that right when we started 
when we started our business i used to think that okay the only way for me to grow my business is to raise outside investment is to right. you know, get a marquee investor behind you and they will keep on putting in money and and you'll grow like anything and that's bullshit right you have you all like you should have a business in the first place you should know how you're going to sustain it for for the next 10 years if you don't get an investment investment is again just a tool for you to help you grow your business better right it's not their job to help you build your business so in fact in ca- in many cases when you don't even have a business people start thinking that they'll be able to raise investments right but right. investment you only like anyways you only get when you already have a very solid ground to stand on but even after that you know you you should never uh, like your business plan and your motivation should be in the right place don't start for the wrong reasons and uh, start as soon as you can if you want to right if you are doubtful don't start you should know that what are you signing up for it's not easy there have been days uh, and again i i say this knowing that we are not uh, i mean again i'm not a very successful or a huge entrepreneur yet but even in my short journey there have been days when you know when with your co-founders with your team you laugh you cry you you literally want to shut down everything run away in the mountains right you get all of those feelings and it's not right. easy at all <clears throat> to run a business so you should know what are you signing up for and uh, the mantra or the advice is to is to make a decision take a stand uh, do your preparation <clears throat> like i said when i started the business manya and i we did like almost 2 years of homework right in the first 2 years of a college we decided that we will acquire the right skills uh, we will start a society so that we can uh, you know hire the right talent we decided that i will do an online business so that we can learn how the e-commerce works so even if you want to start set a date on it start training yourself in the extras acquire the knowledge that you want to and then just go for it right if you do if you don't think that you have it then stop thinking about it and just focus on doing what you're doing in and uh, you know become a more important part of someone else's entrepreneurial journey which might give you just enough satisfaction right i like to think that everyone who's working with us in my company mm. they are not a part of paras's or manya's journey right it's their right. journey as well right now we have a combined journey we are in the same boat all of us right and right. in fact if anything manya and i we like to think that we are a small part of our of our uh, team members of our employees journeys right and if we continue to give them exposure if we continue to give them growth opportunities and learning and all that then company's growth is going to be a side effect right it's it a by product it's anyways right. going to happen <clears throat> so your motivations your uh, uh, your mind and heart always need to be aligned your motivations your you know everything that you want to do in life should be focusing on value value for your clients value for your team members value for yourself and i think uh, everything else will follow that's that's a nice that's a nice mantra honestly okay so before we end the show uh paris we do one thing that we ask the entrepreneurs coming on the show to recommend another entrepreneur whom you think has a very insightful and inspiring journey whom we can call here and talk about it so who would you recommend oh sure so uh, okay so first name that comes to mind i think relevant for the audience uh, that might be listening to this podcast i think Uh, there's a very good friend his name is uh, kumar mayank he runs a fantastic company called zimio uh, okay zimio and uh, he has he has had a like a great journey it will almost give you goosebumps right and uh, he's again uh, one of uh, one of the source of inspirations and motivation for all of us he's a very okay. good friend a fellow fellow beka member and uh, uh, he's he's been in the media a lot lately uh his company is getting a lot of exposure and i think uh, he has a fantastic story to share which might be a great addition to the show so yeah okay and, uh, mayank thank you so much then we'll make sure that mayank comes on the show and with that we come towards the end of the show and i want to thank you paras so much for coming here and taking out time and this has been very very insightful honestly i mean looking at your journey the way you started and the way you've been doing things and everything like it's it's just very very inspiring and the, the yes 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 it's it's definitely a pleasure and one thing that i really like is you know that persistence that uh, if i want to do this i am going to do this no matter 
what happens no matter the hurdles so you have got to have a thick skin that's for sure that's definitely that's definitely that's for sure so yeah thank you so much paris thanks a lot for coming in thank you sir bye thank you this the bye i hope that you're able to take back something insightful from this podcast and apply it in your life to be a better version of yourself and add to your dhandoni soch if you know someone whom you think should feature on my podcast and has a very inspiring entrepreneurial journey then do drop me a dm on my instagram S A R T H A K V A R S H N E Y Sarthak Varshney yeah that's me I'm the founder of SV Clicks and SV Clicks is the producer of this show you can find me on Facebook or LinkedIn as well with the same name if you're willing to listen to more of such unheard inspiring stories of the entrepreneurs then don't forget to follow us by pressing that follow button on your podcast screen thank you for being such an amazing audience Keep learning, keep growing. We'll be back soon. See ya.